Hi, my name is Ken, and you're watching Mastering UX. You know, Jacob Nielsen's heuristics are quite well known and often included in design guidelines and best practice documents. Today, I wanted to share why I've never personally opted to use Jacob Nielsen's 10 heuristics on really any project. And it's not because his 10 heuristics are, quote, bad, but because evaluations are rarely general. They usually require that you're thoughtful about the criteria that are most relevant to the project that you're on. Okay, so let's get into Jacob Nielsen's 10 heuristics and why you should either come up with your own criteria or find another set of criteria that's really more specific to the project that you're on. Now, to be clear, Jacob Nielsen himself has stated that his usability heuristics are not a substitute for rigorous user testing, that they're intended to be used as a quick general evaluation of a product's usability rather than a comprehensive usability evaluation. So let's, if you haven't heard already, let's get a little bit into Jacob Nielsen's usability heuristics. Um, what are these usability heuristics? Well, his, evaluate, his evaluation is based on 10 criteria. And let me go down these. So number one, there's the visibility of the system status. Number two, there's a match between the system and real world. Number three, there's the user control and freedom. Number four, there's consistency in standards. Number five, there's error prevention. Number six, recognition rather than recall. Number seven, flexibility and efficiency of use. Uh, number eight, there's the aesthetic and minimalist design. Uh, number nine, help users recognize, diagnose, and recover from errors. And number 10, it's to help documentation. So when you're doing an evaluation, you'll have an audience that you're either presenting to or people that will read or glance over your findings. And if your criteria do not reflect the most important criteria for your project to be effective or successful, then it's easy to come up with six out of 10 on certain scores, and these end up landing on a leader's desk then there's when there's really 20 other criteria that are more important to the application that you're working on. So let me give you an example. Let's say you're shopping for a practical economy car and you need to you need to review for some of these cars and you decide to look at a Kia Rio, which costs a little over $17,000. Would you want the reviewer to focus on racing capabilities, exciting visual appeal first? You no, know, a good review would probably emphasize that the re how the Rio compares with other economy cars on price, fuel, economy, space, uh, the experience as a commuter, along with its 1.6 liter Pepe engine. The Kia Rio beckons to be evaluated as a simple transportation car at a low price. So on the flip side, would it be right to evaluate an exotic Ferrari with a list of criteria such as price, fuel efficiency, safety, reliability, cargo space? Oh yeah, and maybe have a point on performance. You get my point. So the next time that you're thinking about doing an evaluation, choose criteria very thoughtfully. If it's an e-commerce shoe website, consider evaluating the categorization of the product navigation, the search experience. You know, on e-commerce, search is immensely important. The product filtration and narrowing experience. Um, diving deep into the product detail pages, possibly really even getting into something as specific as the product images, the credibility um, that surrounds the website, the reviews, uh, the cross-sell functionality. There's a whole list of very important aspects of an e-commerce website that are simply not on a general list of criteria laid out in 10 heuristics. Okay, so you're probably saying, Ken, are you saying just come up with your own criteria and that's all there is to it? Well, yes and no. After picking your criteria, you need to come up with either a measurement or way to express something that you did in that criteria. It could be a binary check mark, could be a one to five score, a commentary. Uh, you can make it visual in a deck with screens and call outs, or you can make it a simple table. 
Because all evaluations are limited, um, because they're based on simple research or judgment, you don't have to make it more scientific than it's not. If it's an internet application, your criteria might be focused on ease of use, task efficiency, performance, security, compatibility with the ecosystem that it's in, and the accessibility. So I hope you don't walk away with the impression that Ten Nielsen, uh, that uh, Nielsen's 10 heuristics are bad. My point is, don't be afraid to come up with your own criteria. I think uh, it's not hard to come up with your own simple evaluation that is more fitting to the application that you're evaluating. So this is episode 42. Thanks for watching this. If you watched the whole video and you just came away with one thing, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I look forward to seeing you again.